10 p.m. B-U-L-O-V-A, Bulova Watch Time. Men, here's exceptional value. The handsomely streamlined Bulova Alden, 15 jewels, extremely dependable. Only $24.75. W-E-A-F, New York. Washington, calling counter-spy. Washington, calling counter-spy. Harding, counter-spy, calling Washington. Harding, counter-spy, calling Washington. The Blue Network presents Phillips H. Lord, counter-spy. Counter-Spy is dedicated to all government undercover men, that invisible army which protects our men on the fighting front and our industries and secrets on the home front. Imagine chief counter-spy of them all as David Harding. One of the methods enemy spies have been using recently to enter the country is to try and fly over our borders at night and drop by parachute in some wild section of a border state. In old Mexico, way back in the Sandy Hills, is a ranch on which is a modern airplane. The ranch is about 90 miles south of Juarez and is well hidden in the hills. Tonight, a Gestapo agent has arrived at the Mexican ranch from where he'll be flown over the border and dropped into Texas. The airplane has been pushed out and is about to take off from the ranch. We are ready to take off at the Texas border, Herr Burger. Texas suitcase. Put it in the cockpit. Senor Burger. Yeah? Senor Burger. Yeah, yeah, what is it, Herr? Do not go yet. Why not? A very unusual thing has just happened, Senor. Yeah, yeah. No one ever comes this far from the main road, but at the ranch house has just arrived Counselor Carlos Costello. Costello? He is taking a long trip by horseback for his health, see, Senor. Make him live. We do not want this place discovered. Oh, but I have a very interesting thought. So? Suppose I tell him you are wealthy Americans down here with your plane. You are going to take a little ride under the moon in the sky. I invite him to go with you. Yeah. When you cross the border, you will fly very low. It will be very unfortunate, but his feet and hands will be tied very tight. The door of the airplane will open. He will fall out. He will be killed. You will find him with his hands and feet tied and dead on American soil. Aha. Uh-huh. I see. There will be quite a strain between the Mexican and the United States governments. A prominent government official murdered on American soil. Yeah, yeah, hello. It is a good thought. Then they picked you to run this ranch, they picked the right man. You like my little idea, huh? The Gestapo shall hear about this. You shall be rewarded. Please, uh, not by medals. I prefer my reward in money. Go, hello. Invite the official to join us. Then we will see what happens. We are so glad you could take this little flight with us, Counselor. Ah, so beautiful. I was never in an airplane at night. With the moon. It is so romantic. You are there, Counselor. We have crossed the border between Mexico and the United States. No. Is it not against the law? Oh, I am sure no one will object while we have such a distinguished gentleman of the Mexican government. <laughs> what is the meaning of this? Oh, oh. You did the help, worker. Yes, I... Tie his feet while I tie his hands. Jabal. Who are you? He said, just stop, oh, if you would like to know. Right now. Why are you kidnapping me? Uh, they are going to open the door of the plane and you are going to fall out. No, you cannot. You will be found on American soil in a very delicate international situation should result. You are a fool. All my bones will be broken. They will They will know I was thrown from an airplane. The Gestapo is not so stupid. We will fly very low. So you will not be killed. But your body will not be mangled either. Drop as slow as you can. Soon Mexico, like the United States, will belong to Germany. And you will be glad that you are dead. You beat! La! La! Now, Counselor, I shall open the door. And we will make ready for your big experience. 
Dios omnipotente, cuida de mí. Libradme de ustedes, hombres. What are you doing? Train? You fool. I cannot fight. I'm tired. Therefore, I must pray. Pray? To whom? Fool. Superstition. Jesus, Santísimo, guarda mi alma. En ti es mi salvación. I will not hear such dribble. There are no enough hands. Here. Why do you have a crayon in your hands? Give me that. Please, senor. Give me a chance to leave. Now I shall push you through the door. Scream. Hala, go on. Oh. He falls. So, he has hit. Put the plane back on the course. This is Harding speaking. I'm in the testing laboratory of the Walker Optical Company. In an hour, I shall take a plane for Washington. Set up my appointment for me at 3 o'clock with Colonel Marvin. Tell him urgent. Emergency. Yes, sir. You wish me to continue, Mr. Harding? Uh, yes, Mr. Walker. And this is a grave emergency. Now, those light bulbs you have lined up over there, are they lit now? Uh, yes. But naturally, as they are high-frequency lights, you cannot see them with your naked eye. Oh, I see. You cannot see the light, Mr. Harding, unless you are wearing this green hypey lens in your glasses. Uh, this is a five-tray one. Mm -hmm. Now, look through it. I... Yes. Yes, I can see the left light's burning, but I can't tell whether the one on the right is burning or not. Well, you would need another specially colored lens to see that one. Oh, in other words, Mr. Harding, these high-frequency lights can be burning, but you cannot see them unless you are wearing specially prepared lenses. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Walker, as I explained to you, this is a case of great emergency. It involves an international incident with Mexico. I see. How soon could you make me 12 pairs of each of these two different lenses? Well, uh, I believe by 8 in the morning, Mr. Harding. Good. I'll have a Navy plane waiting off Pier 3 and a government car here to deliver them to the plane at 8 sharp in the morning. Right now, I'm going to fly to Washington. What can I do for you, Mr. Harding? Well, Colonel Marvin, we've known for some time that certain Gestapo agents have been getting into this country by flying over the border from a ranch in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Now, they're landing in a deserted section of Texas where they usually stay for several days before leaving for different parts of the United States. Hmm. In other words, you've allowed them to enter this way because you know how they're entering. And that's better than stopping this route and forcing them to find some other method, which may take you months to discover, is that it? Exactly, Colonel. Harding, you know we'll do anything possible to help you. Now, Colonel, tomorrow night I'd like to have about eight army planes from Field A-46 fly all over the state of Texas and into Louisiana. I'll be at field headquarters in Texas with a map to get their reports. What information are you looking for, Harding? Well, now, one house which we recently raided had up the chimney a high-frequency light. Now, that light can't be seen at night when you're flying over the house unless you have a certain colored lens in your glasses. Mm -hmm. I feel sure that there are a certain few houses for, let's say, 200 miles in Texas which have these lights hidden up the chimney. I see. Now, the pilot who's flying these foreign agents in wears these special colored glasses. He can see these high-frequency lights placed in the chimneys, and these help keep him on his course. Mm. And you want to locate every house which has such a light, hmm? Yes, and it's vital. I'll have a plane ready to leave in two hours, Harding, and I'll fly down with you to see that you have everything you need. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Now, Colonel, if we can have the houses which have these invisible lights spotted from the air, we'll know the exact route the plane's flying which brings in these spies. Right to the ranch where they land and stay for a few days. When that time comes, we'll be able to make a mass raid. I see, yes, yes. But Harding, what are we doing about that prominent Mexican official found tied and murdered on American soil? Now, that's a very embarrassing situation. Well, Colonel, there's something about that murder that I can't tell as yet. I want to check a certain additional facts before I speak. All right, Harding. You're doing a wonderful job, and I'll see that eight army planes will be flying over the designated section of Texas tomorrow night. Thank you, sir. Just look at this chart, Mr. Harding. That last report mentioned this house. 
Southwest, square 411. Mm. Let me have that other chart, Kelly. Yes, sir. Yes, notice how this route's beginning to shape up. 42P calling. 42P calling 4X. Come in. I'm flying over Sandville. Check your chart. Chart square TS4. Chart square TS4. Here's the square he's talking about, Kelly, this square. Hmm. Northeast beam intersection. Main highway, two miles from corner. Can you locate on your chart? Yes, yes. This house right here. 42P, we have located it. 42P, signing off. I've got that marked. Your signal light's on, Kelly, the upper frequency. Yes, sir. 42R, calling. 42R, calling. Come in, 42R. Come in, 42R. Charge square, 6, CS6, northeast corner, intersection, military highway, south in Fork of Road. I've got that one too, it's right here. Cross check with field light, southeast, due west. That's all. 42R signing off. Kelly, these houses being spotted are on a perfectly straight line from the border right to the ranch we've been suspecting. Now, tomorrow night, we'll fly this route, check all of the houses we're marking, and go right to their landing field. Now, bring a short wave set along with you in your suitcase. We've seen every light the pilots reported last night, Mr. Harding. As we should spot that ranch and their landing field most any minute. Yes, sir. Kelly, I'm going to tell you something that nobody else knows. Yeah. It sounds plenty serious, Mr. Harding. You know that high Mexican official found murdered on American soil? Yes, sir. Well, he was murdered by members of this spy ring we're after right now. You mean they got him in Mexico, flew him over the border, and dropped him from a plane? Yes. Well, that isn't all. It wasn't the body of a high Mexican official. But his papers, he was identified. I did the identifying. Oh. And who was it? It was one of our own counter spies, Kelly. Tato Zali. Tato? Hmm. Yes. I was working with the Mexican authorities. We suspected this Mexican ranch, so the Mexican counselor was taken into our confidence. He went into hiding for a few days. And Tato, posing as the counselor, visited the ranch. Well, he was evidently surprised by them and dropped out of a plane. Good Lord. But how do you know he was dropped from a plane, Mr. Hart? The old trick. In the scuffle, he got a pencil from his vest and hid it in the palm of his hand. While his hands were tied together, he was able to write on the palm of one hand the word air. There's the landing field, Mr. Harding. Yes, there's the large ranch house and the two barns. Ah, it's barren, all right. Hey, go. Murdered. We'll land and I'll have the pilot take off immediately. Oh, Lieutenant, land as far from the house as you can. We'll hide the suitcase with a short wave set out in the field. Perhaps they won't hear us land. We can get to the house before they know we're here. What do you want? Who are you? BR2. We want to stay a couple of days. My name is Mr. David. This is Mr. Kelly. Where did you come from? Hacienda Pedro, over the border. We've been traveling a long time. We want to rest a day and then go on. Yes. I have a room for you. You can have food here, too. Yeah. Are you empty now, or do you have any more guests? We have an Italian and... Oh, and the Japanese. I did not want to take him in, but we are under orders. And your husband? He is out in the barn. He will meet him when he comes in. Is the Japanese of the Black Dragons? Yes. And the Italian of the Obra? Yes. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Now, I ask, uh, for one must be most careful in our work, uh, do you expect any more guests tonight? Not for several days. 
You wish to go up to your room now? Just to clean up. Then I think I'll take a walk around and get a look at things. After you have washed, you will find my husband in the barn. You will again identify yourself to him. Calling 42B. Calling 42B. Calling 42B. Come in. Calling from field at location specified. Locate for me immediately. German couple. About 60. Want couple opposed to Nazi rule. Check my file numbers for names of couples already examined. Fly this couple to our present location. 11.30 tomorrow night. Check. Report sufficient. 42B off. That is all. All right, Kelly. Close the case. Slip under the bushes again. Yes, sir. That Nazi woman in there was a brutal-looking character. Now, let's get right back to the house. I don't want them to notice that we've been gone too long. What did you think of her husband? I'll answer that a little later. If I'm not mistaken, I've got a complete report on him in Washington. A fanatic, isn't he? <laughs> Aren't they all? Would they be Nazis if they weren't? Well, if you weren't in on the inside of things, though, you could stop at the ranch and not guess anything was wrong. Oh, yes, they're clever. But... What was that? Quick, get back to the house. What's the matter? What's going on? Where is everybody? I heard footsteps upstairs. Let's get up there. Where are you? What do you want? in my room at the other end of the house. I heard a scream from this room. I come running. The Italian and I got here just at the same time. I, uh, I was at the other end of the house, in my room. You'd better fix your collar. Looks like someone had grabbed it and torn the button off. Here comes my husband. He will be very angry. Where were you, may I ask, when this happened? And the other gentleman? We were walking toward the house. We heard the scream. We ran in here as quickly as possible. Very pleasant alibi. What has happened? Why did one of you scream like that? Why are you all standing there looking at... Oh. I see. He was evidently stabbed in the back while he was sleeping. I am not angry because the Japanese is killed. I hate them. But you should have been killed somewhere else. Who did it? None of us seems to know. Did you? I was at the other end of the house, in my room. And you? I would not have done it inside the house, you know that. You too? No. No, we were outside, walking toward the house. You left me 20 minutes ago. Where have you been since? Why did you not come right back to the house? Because we were all cramped up from traveling. We wanted to stretch our legs, take a little walk. So? There are so many ways it could have been done to leave no telltale. The river out of a plane. Yes, like possibly you would do with a Mexican. Why do you say that? <laughs> Hello told me of it. The Hacienda Pedro in Mexico. They all thought it very clever. That man Hello talks too much. Here, yeah. let me get him up on my shoulder. I will take him out and bear him in the field. Yeah, gladly. There. There. Come with me. We will bury him to leave no traces. I will go with you and hold a lantern. Do you two wish to come? Not interested, thank you. Kelly, 
Will you do me one favor? What, sir? Kick me just as hard as you can. Why? Well, the minute I saw that Jap had been murdered, by habit and instinct, I started to ask questions. I knew the Italian had killed him. And all I'd have had to do was ask about three more pointed questions, and there'd have been plenty of trouble. Come to think of it, you're right. You didn't think the woman killed the Jap spy? I think they were all in on it. It was planned before we got here. But that teaser you put out, Mr. Harding, you got results, didn't you? Yes, he fell for it. He's the one who thought Zollis was the Mexican official and threw him out of the plane. What's our next move? Just sit tight until the army plane arrives at 11.30 tomorrow night. Mr. Harding, that's the army plane, all right. Yeah. Take these glasses. Yeah. It's signaling with the invisible light. Just to the right of the moon, see? Uh, yeah, good. Good. Now we've got to work fast while the plane's landing. The German couple and the Italian are in the sitting room. Let's go in. And you will leave? I will be leaving in the morning. I have already American money, which I will supply with. Uh, if you two gentlemen don't mind my intruding, and if it's all right with you, madam, I'm going to have to ask you all to get your hands up. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. We both have you covered. You won't have to do much persuading for me to put a bullet right through you. Signor, signor, le prego. Per carità, io non sono nemico. Per l'amore di Dio. You vampire fool. We don't operate like your Gestapo, Burga. We give them a chance according to our laws. Why do you call me Burga? That is not my name. The name I have you listed by in Washington. You forget your activities in the boon before the war broke out. And incidentally, the Mexican government official you threw from the plane wasn't the Mexican counselor. I don't know what you're talking about. He was an American counter-spy, one of my assistants, posing as a counselor. I'll promise you, Burger, you're going to pay for that and pay plenty. <laughs> I'll give you money. I'll tell you all I know. Enough of this. An army plane's just landed outside. Now march out that door to the plane and keep your hands up. <laughs> Mr. Harding, that's a sweet old couple the plane brought down. Yeah. Motherly looking soul, isn't she? You wouldn't think that this couple who just arrived and the other couple who we took out to the plane were both German. Well, there are some Germans who are not Nazis. Well, I'll let them finish looking around the house, and we'll leave in the army plane with those others we're taking with us. Well, I believe we have seen it all, Mr. Harding. It is quite a place. Now... Do you two feel that you can live here and pretend to be Nazis and run this place for the spies who come over? Yeah, Mama is a great actress when she needs to be. And so is Papa. I will run the house and he will look after the outside and the little radio station to send you the information. Good. Now, as soon as a spy arrives, we shall want his complete description. Something that he's touched so we can get his fingerprints. Knowledge of where he's going... And any information about what he has in his bag. We shall see you have it all, eh, Papa? We shall do everything. We shall give our lives to see the Nazis crushed and wiped off the face of this earth. You too must have had a terrible experience from the report. Oh, we lived just outside of Hamburg. We were happy. And our two boys had graduated and were the ministers of the German Lutheran Church. It was in the middle of the night. Ach, Papa. The Gestapo broke in the front door and dragged our two boys out of bed. Then they came and got Mama and me. You forgot. They beat our boys because they were ministers of the church. They dragged them outside. They tied our boys to the fence. They made us watch. The Gestapo stepped back and took aim and shot them. Our youngest boy, Hans, he did not die. So the leader of the Gestapo put a pistol to his head, spit at him, and fired. The leader of the Gestapo tore off the crucifix that Hans wore around his neck. He threw it on the ground, stepped on it. Then he raised his arm at the Nazi salute and said, Heil Hitler, the Führer will rule the world. We left Germany, Mama and me. It took us four months to escape across the border, but we did it. Now we are in this country. God bless it. 
Then you know what it means to have the Nazis rule. Wait. Wait, I hear footsteps. Somebody's coming. Careful now. There may be trouble. Yeah? Come in. I am a traveler. X4 from Mexico. On the Hacienda Pedro. You have arrived at the right place, X4. Good. Our plane was forced down. I have had to come the last hundred miles by motorcycle. Hi, Hitler. The Fuhrer will rule the world. The Fuhrer will rule the world. I remember. I shall show you to your room. Who are these men? We don't ask questions like that around here. Yes, you are right. Take my bag. Yeah. Now, Mama, bring a light from the mantel. We will show this gentleman to his home. Yeah, Papa. Uh, this way, please. I don't think, Kelly, that we're needed here anymore. No. Let's go to the plane. Look how bright the stars are tonight, Mr. Hardy. Yes, Kelly. Now, they're one of the things in this world that are permanent. Permanent like the faith of Christian people. Now, at the time of the Crusaders, barbarians tried to crush faith from the face of the earth. But the Christians rose up and pushed those hordes right back into the sea. Well, the great Christian army has risen again. And Nazism will be wiped from the face of the earth. All over this country tonight is spread a great army of counter spies, men whose names may never be known or their deeds ever revealed. But 24 hours a day, seven days a week, these counter spies are the guardians of our home front. <laughs> counter spy will not be heard next week, June 29th. Starting Monday night, July 6th, counter spy, a Philip H. Lord production, will be presented at a much more convenient time. 8 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern War Time, 7 to 7.30 p.m. Central Time, 6 to 6.30 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 to 5.30 p.m. in the Pacific Time Zone. Tell your friends. Invite them to listen to these exciting, dramatized cases. Make it a date for Monday, July 6th, at the new hour. Ten Percent Club, whose membership is composed of all patriotic Americans who are voluntarily putting ten percent of their incomes regularly into war bonds and stamps. Here's all you have to do to become a member: arrange to buy war bonds on a regular basis to the extent of ten percent or more of your present income, or authorize your employer to deduct ten percent or more from your regular salary or wage check. Your government is making special efforts to have everyone a member of the 10% Club. Join today. Counterspy originated in New York. You are listening to the Blue Network. Mm.